Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, checking in with a weekly garden tour. Last night we got to 20 degrees here in my home garden, and you can see the daffodils, uh, many of which are flopped over. I'm gonna cut those and make a big bodacious arrangement. Overall, the garden doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Uh, I haven't really walked around extensively, and I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm also preparing for upcoming in-person events. This coming weekend, I'm gonna be in Newport News, Virginia at the uh, Christopher Newport University Garden Symposium, and I've been busy packaging seed. So um, I am mostly selling grains that um, no one seems to have in stock, uh, including sorghum, sesame and rice i sell one ounce packets for five dollars at in-person events only no mail order do not email me asking me to ship you seeds that is not the business that i run but if you have an opportunity to see me at an upcoming event um, i should have seeds available you can check my website breegrows.com to see where i'm going to be over the next couple of months um, again Seed sales are for at in-person events only, including different spring symposiums and at my spring open garden on Saturday, May 7th from noon to 4 p.m. But let's take a quick stroll. It's, it's actually still quite cold, um, but it is nice. I'm not a morning person, so I love daylight savings, and I really appreciate having the added light this afternoon so that I could actually come outside and, and do something. So let's take a quick walk so that you can see how the garden fared with this mid-March dip down into the low 20s. Well, we'll start right here off the front porch. And these containers don't look too bad. You know, the mustard has was damaged really badly in um, January when we got really cold after being super warm over the holidays. And I will probably just plan to actually do a hard cut on these. Not even because they have that much damage, just because once they start flowering going to seed, they die. <laughs> um, as suspected, the cardoons uh, were definitely damaged. They are probably the least cold hardy and I, you know, I usually don't buy them, but last year we were so mild and they looked really good. This year I bought a lot and I shouldn't have. These containers, I had pots inverted over them and even with the pots, you can see the snapdragons are, are pretty nipped. The tender new growth on the mustard Barley unfazed. Unfazed. You want to grow something hardy, grow barley. <laughs> Wheat, oats, rye, all the grains, all those cool season grains. And here you can see this big pot had that pot turned over it, but still the cardoon, yeah, you know, lots of damage here. I'm just going to cut these basically to that point. And I'll probably end up trimming the damaged snapdragons, but I'm probably, I'm probably gonna wait at least a few days before I do any major cutting because you never really know, well, I don't think anything is gonna bounce back, but I don't wanna cut them too hard. So I want the, it to be really obvious where I should cut. I'll be sure to make a video about that. Well, how is that for a decadent bouquet? So it's really interesting. I wasn't sure how the daffodils would fare and the flowers themselves are totally fine. What is most of in, impacted by the cold is their stem. So instead of being sturdy and upright, the cold actually damaged the strength of their stem. So that's why I'm just going ahead and picking them to put into a really incredible arrangement. Otherwise, they're just gonna decompose on the ground. And I mentioned my seeds. I just wanted to show you guys my pretty packaging. <laughs> so I'm just using up these stickers. Um, and this is rice. But then I have sesame. I still have to package okra. And I have sorghum already packed. And tomorrow when it's warmer, I can get the shed emptied and I'll figure out what other seeds I have 
to be able to start packaging for spring sales. Okay, now that I have the daffodils harvested, let's take a walk. The barley in the wave looks fine. You know, in-ground things generally I'm not as concerned about. Miraculously, this, this lettuce, wildfire lettuce mix wasn't damaged at all. You can see poppies and larkspur not damaged whatsoever. Um, there's some other daffodils blooming, little hyacinths, grape hyacinths. Uh, this quince is in bloom. It looks a little bit frost damaged, but not too bad. That's the advantage of dark red flowers. I wonder how the camellias look. Oh, wow. Look what's blooming. Circus chinensis donigoff. And, oh, look at... <laughs> they are frost damaged, but because it's a dark red camellia, this is royal velvet, it doesn't look as bad as they could. Obviously, this is, this is cold damage. You see how the tissue is like, you know, <laughs> you can tell they're frost damaged. But it looks like there's a lot of buds on there still. Hopefully, hopefully by the end of the week, some new flowers will open that won't show the damage from this cold snap. Um, over here, October Fair actually looks like there are some good flowers still on it. Well, no, those are also frost damaged. <laughs> Probably not gonna get a thousand likes on Instagram posting a camellia picture like that. But that's just the reality of cold weather in March. <laughs> I just have to stop and take note at how high the sun is in the sky. It's after six. I love daylight savings. Like I wish we kept it all, all year long. I know you're either, you're either on one side or the other. I like having more daylight in the evenings. Obviously hellivore is not impacted at all. I'm going to get to make some really cool floating flower arrangements this week. And Don Egoff, Circus Chinensis, doesn't look bad. Does not look like any severe damage, at least. Absolutely love this plant. Look at these flower buds all the way down the stem. You know, this is why it's so different from our native Circus Canadensis, which I sadly don't have any of because all of mine died from ambrosia beetles. But I know I've mentioned this before, my two Circus chinensis did not get in infected by ambrosia beetle. And Jax has started to open. Um, unfortunately, all of these flowers are showing signs of frost damage. But there's still a lot of buds that are really tight that should be totally fine. So when they open, provided we don't have any more really hard freezes, uh, we'll get to enjoy some blemish-free Jack's flowers. Again, that light. <laughs> it's, I'm really grateful that it's sunny right now, but it's, that's why it's going to be still so cold tonight, because it's clear. So, I haven't really undone anything. Now, let's check out these sunshine blue blueberries which don't look as bad as I thought they would but you can definitely see frost damage like that flower just fell off from touching it and they're they you know they're squishy <laughs> so I bet there will still be some some fruit set on these but yeah not not as good as if it as if it hadn't gotten cold out. Like I said in those in my container uh, video for preparing for a cold snap, the grains are not phased at all. So you see they don't they don't look bad. There's there's no damage to the grains. And I did have some aphids on the grains, <laughs> and I'm hoping that the dumb cold weather would have taken them out, although probably it didn't. Nope. I still see, I still see live aphids. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So
so I definitely this week will um, post a video about how to make your own insecticidal soap. It's really easy. These cut leaf mustards, which obviously because of the warmer weather had started growing, are a little floppy and they would benefit from a cutback anyway. So I will get that. I will do some cutbacks this week and I'll probably spruce up some of my containers just knowing that we have some frost free weather ahead and I'm not going to count this though as our last frost because I know better than that. I have been literally burned <laughs> or I guess frozen in this in this garden as late as the last week of April. So I'm not going to get too confident um, even though the forecast is pretty mild. And you can see here the blueberries. This is powder blue. Some of these are damaged. These flowers are mushy and brown. But I think there's enough that weren't as far ahead. So these should still flower and in theory set fruit provided we don't have any additional really hard frosts. Usually blueberry flowers are pretty hardy, but you know, 20 degrees, they're not hardy to 20 degrees. I'd say like 27 with blueberry flowers, you're probably fine without covering. And especially when they're in tight bud like this, there's really no need to add protection. And I'm glad I didn't try to cover these because we had a lot of rain and then a huge amount of wind and having like sheets, wet sheets or wet, wet quilts and stuff out over the plants definitely would have caused more stem damage than just the loss of some flowers. You can see the uh, violas look fine. They weren't really damaged. And these uh, pots here, I had inverted these solid pots over them. Everything here on the back patio looks fine. Well, I'm super sad to show you these sweet peas, which they were setting flower buds and now they're a wilty mess. I'm not going to do any cutbacks of any kind because you never know how things will recover, but this is a real disappointment. I mean, look at that. It was like a week away from flowering. Actually, the arugula really kind of took a bit of a hit. You see how the flower stalks are bent over? Um, it's still fine. I'm not, you know. <laughs> and there's plenty of arugula to harvest. Um, but that's interesting because arugula is really hardy. But again, it's super tender. It's all about the level of new growth that you have with regard to frost damage. Like 20 degrees if it hadn't been warm, would not have been a problem. Now, looking in here, ooh, I don't, I'm actually thinking that this, this made it worse. Shoot, that's too bad. Um, okay, I'm gonna uncover these. <laughs> Maybe uh, pots are, were better, let's see. Oh no, no. That's that, they don't look good. All right, well, no point in recovering them. Golly. I know that the um, potatoes will come back, but I was hoping that these pots would have prevented that level of damage, but it, it didn't. So, uh, scrap that piece of advice that I gave. <laughs> Covering these did not help at all. I'll be honest, I didn't even notice that this maple had leafed out. I can't remember what maple this even is. I thought it was Acer Fabrii, but I'm not sure. But that definitely took a hit. It was leafed out way too early. Over here, the willow is fine. I think this is like hardy to zone three, so it should be fine. And let's check out how the Big Edge Worthy affaired. So it's almost finished flowering. It's still pretty. You can see it definitely got some frost damage. 
the flowers are starting to fall apart, but it's still pretty. <laughs> I'm very grateful for the time that we had with the Edgeworthias this year to really be able to enjoy them for such a long period of time. Love this plant so very much. Coming around to the woodland, let's see. <laughs> hydrangeas definitely do what hydrangeas do. So all the new growth on the hydrangeas is burnt back. They'll they'll be fine. They'll resprout. It's pretty. It, I don't have a lot of remotant or like new varieties that bloom on old wood, because I'm not a hydrangea collector at all. Um, though I happen to have quite a few hydrangeas, it's not intentional. <laughs> um, but uh, a lot of times this happens and they don't flower for me. That that's just the variety selection. If you get something like endless summer or a pop star, there's actually a whole bunch of, of re-blooming hydrangeas that the frost don't really matter. Uh, happy Higo looks a little unhappy. You know, again, I need to take some pictures of these just to add to my camellia programming about what cold damaged flowers look like. Cause that's, you know, that's exactly what they look like. Of course, these Edgeworthias look fine, and the Papifera is starting to get a little more perky. A few more flowers are open, and the Chrysantha snow cream here is, again, just about finished. Let's see, the hellebores are the real troopers, and I am really stoked to gather a bunch of these up to make floating flower arrangements. I really love this one. I'm sad I didn't get to go up to Pine Knot this year, but I was traveling when they had their open houses. I like this uh, kind of ivory color double as well. And look at all the flowers on that. It's pretty impressive. Well, as everyone who grows deciduous magnolias knows, this is <laughs> this is what happens. When I call them dirty Kleenex, I think it's actually a pretty accurate description for what they end up looking like with cold weather. In contrast though, uh, the Coralopsis, not damaged at all, just starting to flower here. And the Witch Hazel, Arnold Promise. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. Oh, I wish smell vision existed and no damage to that at all. And overall, I think the garden fared pretty well, maybe other than the places where I interfered by covering. I can't believe how bad those potatoes look. Oh God, now I'm nervous to undo that tarp because what if it caused more damage? <laughs> I'm gonna wait until tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think I have it in me today. <laughs> Probably for the best that this ranunculus brazen hussy looks somewhat frost damaged, though probably not enough. This is definitely starting to be a bit of a problem seeder for me. Not a problem, but it's starting to seed. You know, like it started here and now I have clumps there and there. And also have my orbit yard enforcer out because the doggone deer are really boy they are like coming with with a lot of power this year so after tonight I should be able to get this set up and I will have a video uh, showing you more about that but this is a, a really great thing to use um, for kind of scaring the deer away you can see what they've done they come through they've been eating all of these violas and they even pull the root balls out of the ground which any of you who have deer, you know, you know exactly, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you know, poppy seedlings look fine. Uh, tender carrots look a bit frosted, a little worse for wear, but not the end of the world. And you know, these poppies that are at small stages, uh, no issues there whatsoever. And just to show you these poppies growing in bags, 
Um, I had some questions that I answered, but I thought I'd tell you. I don't thin, and these are not going to be transplanted. These are growing in this bag for the purpose of its whole lifespan will be in these bags. Um, that's the point of this experiment. Look how great the poppy seedlings look, unfazed by 20 degrees. We did get a lot of rain. See, my wheelbarrow has a lot of water in it. And oh, let's check out these blueberries. I didn't even look. Uh, yeah, all these lower ones are mush. Hopefully, see there's still buds like this that haven't opened that aren't frost damaged. So again, if this is our last really cold frost like again these will be fine with temperatures like 27 degrees but down to 20 degrees um if we have that again i bet we won't get any blueberries this year at all so fingers crossed that doesn't happen and i can't help it let's just walk over here and see so if it looks worse than it did two days ago i might as well just undo it oh it doesn't look worse okay I'm gonna leave it for tonight. I really just wanna have a couple of tulips. This is the only way I can grow them because the stupid voles eat them to no end. So, you know, they're in a cattle fence trough. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's garden tour. I can't believe that I'm outside with gloves and my ear warmers on, but it's really cold and it's, it is going below freezing again tonight. This week's garden tour was maybe not as inspirational as I wish it could be, but it's realistic. And I do hope that you will heed my warnings about not skipping ahead to summer. Spring actually doesn't arrive until March 20th. And be realistic in that spring is a season of temperature fluctuations. We go warm and we get cold and it could likely continuously happen at least for the next month and a half. So I hope that you will follow my lead and grow more spring vegetables and spring flowers to be able to enjoy without stress and wait at least a few more weeks before you get those summer vegetables started. Please be sure to subscribe as I will continue posting videos on the regular, showing you everything that I'm up to as we finish out the winter of 2022. And I thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you at one of my upcoming speaking events where I will also be selling seeds and books. Take care, everybody.